Hey boys and girls, there's there's like 10% of you. I've been uploaded in a while, and uh, you know, I'm not sorry or anything. Um, I do have Rec Room news though. Now, I've been gone for about almost a week now, but Rec Room has not. So of course, we have some new things to talk about, like some cool things happening with Switch, some cool things that are happening with moderation with custom shirts, and a bunch more that we'll be talking about. Of course, stay tuned, and you better be using my code. If you don't use my code, I'll find you. Now, yes, that's right, you heard me literally right now inside the intro talk about Nintendo Switch. And it's been announced that Rec Room is launching on Nintendo Switch November 6th, and don't forget to pre-register at rec.net slash switch for your free headphones. If you don't remember, Remember, you get free headphones for this whole, you know, device being set up, so register your account or else. And there are a few things that I do want to talk about when it comes to Rec Room coming to Switch. I have a few talking points that I am going to explain and share here, and of course, let me give them a read. When Rec Room is on the Switch, it'll be free and crossplay with any other devices that Rec Room is available on. It will support voice chat as long as you have, you know, a mic and headphones. And Rec Room on the Switch will not require a Nintendo Switch Online membership. Switch players can play all their favorite Rec Room originals, explore tons of player-made rooms, and chat and hang out with their friends as well. The game will be available to install on Nintendo eShop November 6. Uh, now, there are some key differences between Switch and other platforms, and this includes UGC such as rooms, inventions, and, and custom avatar items that violate any company's intellectual property will not be accessible. UGC that doesn't meet T for Teens or PG-12 standards will be restricted. External website links are completely blocked. Clubs are non-existent. Events will not be available except for official events like Retcon. The closing customizer feature is also completely unavailable as well. Players on Switch can create rooms and invite friends, but cannot publish UGC. UGC sales are often disabled and players cannot receive tokens from sales made on other platforms. The portfolio page doesn't exist anymore either and tokens purchased on Nintendo Switch cannot transfer to other platforms and vice versa. However, tokens purchased through gameplay can be used freely across platforms. And lastly, UGC content must be manually reviewed before being added on Nintendo Switch. At this time, they won't be accepting requests to review specific content. And that's pretty much all the information that you need to know about Nintendo Switch coming to Rec Room. Super important stuff to note, and of course, be sure to let me know if any of these, you know, points take you by surprise or not. Anything you were or weren't expecting? Now, I was super busy this last week, and I had missed the new weekly shop rotation and stuff like that. In case you guys haven't seen, it's just all fall-themed and stuff, and it's very cute. I even got a return of this little leaf buddy, and I think this little leaf buddy too. I'm not too sure, but this guy was super rememberable. And we even got this guy as well. Oh, I hate how he looks. These were our items if you were interested. These were our rec center items if you were interested. And we even got a new little broom too, which is also pretty cool. Just a new Rec Room Plus item. That's nice. And then we got some new stuff on the board, like Evertight, a new featured creator. And then we got some new stuff on the Rec Room YouTube page, as well as the Instagram. Don't get me started on the featured rooms. Those are different too, of course. And other than that, other than this weekly rotation, the rec center's pretty empty. And uh, yeah, we'll just have to see again this next Friday. And that's our weekly rotation shop. Now, before I get into our next announcement, I got a sponsored segment to talk about. <laughs> Shameless self plug. Ah, ah, I'm not sorry. I'm not apologizing. Yeah, that's right. Your boy got sponsored by Kiwi Design. If you're wondering what today's sponsor is all about, it's about Kiwi Design's new Halo battery strap, the H4 Boost. With its cutting edge design with multiple fine tuning joints and self adaptive mechanism, the H4 Boost caters to all the individual preferences that you may have, which ensures a customized fit for basically anyone that uses this actual head strap. Now, this Halo battery strap shop doesn't have just all this cool design features as well, but it also has a pretty spanking battery too. Extending about 2-3 to three hours of playtime on your actual headset and takes about 2.5 hours to charge all the way back up, the H4 Boost basically allows you to game on all the day long essentially. The H4 Boost is stronger, slimmer, better, balanced, and even more portable now than its older counterpart as well. And Kiwi Design sent this all to your boy. Yes, I don't me. I have zero complaints. Like, like zero complaints about this actual head strap. It, it works great. Now, with this actual product, I like it a lot. It's very comfortable, and it really does not lie about it, you know, balancing the weight and ensuring, quote-unquote, a stress-free wearing experience because it's great. I only really play my headset with Link installed and stuff like that, so I don't really use the battery a whole bunch, but if you do have just standalone VR, then it might just be a lifesaver for you. It's honestly just a super comfortable head strap. It's pretty small, and honestly, it feels great to wear. If you guys are interested in a new head strap or are just looking for a battery extender for your Quest 3 or Quest 3S headset, then of course, I would greatly recommend the H4 Boost. 
if you do want to get started on buying it, you guys can start off with my actual, you know, promotion code, which is just SKL for 5% off your order. That's SKL for 5% off that order. If you want to check out more Kiwi products and stuff like that, or check out the actual H4 Boost, I will have the link down inside the description below for you guys. And of course, remember, SKL for 5% off your order. Thank you, Kiwi Design, for sponsoring me. And of course, let's get back to the video. <sighs> what a great sponsor. A anyways, let's talk about this new announcement. And it said you might have noticed that we placed a new feature in the latest update. Check out this blog post to read all about it, and it's manipulate more with place. Now this developer blog basically talks about their place update for screens and stuff like that. If you guys don't know, it's like this new update that helps them play chess, etc. And here's what they're doing to make it fun to be with. Now they love knowing that you can create and play with your friends on pretty much any device that you have, but we also know that there are some differences between our platforms, and we want players to use their phones or consoles like Xbox and PlayStation to feel that they are in Rec Room just like you're in VR. That's why we released a new feature called Place. So what is Place? Place does what it says. Allows you to more accurately place and manipulate some objects in Rec Room. It currently applies to the Maker Pen objects that are grabbable, but don't have collision or physics. For example, moving objects around on a board game like Checkers just got a whole lot easier now when you can play on your phone or console or PC, and you'll have much better control over your hands in Rec Room. Check out these checkerboard moves. But why are we doing this? Well, we had a theory that making non-VR devices more interactive would benefit everyone in the Rec Room community, and turns out it's true. It's more fun to out with players who can also move things around more precisely and interact with the world you're in. And we're seeing that especially in our community created rooms, which means more players are spending time enjoying the awesome work or of our creators. Because of this, we are going to continue to iterate on how we can make Rec Room an, an even more fun and interactive place. Haha, uh -huh, get it? No matter what device you're using, I, I don't get the joke. Anyways, their second version to this feature is coming soon, and when that releases, it will mean that you can move and interact with even more objects, and it'll be easier to start and stop using play. This way, you'll be able to play more games and even use old objects in new ways. Donut stacking competition, anyone? We hope you find this useful and we're excited to hear what you think and be sure to let them know your feedback on not only inside the Discord server, but maybe inside my comments too. They're listening. They're listening. And that's not it. We have another announcement from Rec Room talking about moderation. Learn about how we do custom shirt moderation and their new appeal system and how they're applying all these lessons to Avatar Studio inside this blog. Another one. <sighs> I love Rec Room blogs. Thank God for him. Anyways, they say, Once upon a time, summer of 2022, in a faraway land, the Roomiverse, and long before Avatar Studio, we launched the Shirt Customizer. It was the first time players could customize clothing and the creativity of the community has shown, confirmed that when we give you the right tools, you make all kinds of cool stuff and a lot of it. We've seen millions and millions of shirt be created and sold. So why bring this up now, two years after the feature launched? Well, we got a new feature we're rolling out for custom shirt publishing and are long overdue for an explainer on how custom shirt moderation has been behind the scenes. We also want to walk through how we've been applying what we learned from custom shirts to our vision for Avatar Studio so that you can create and wear Avatar items to be your favorite version of you while still being fun and welcoming for everyone. We've seen so much creativity come in our custom, out in our custom shirts and we've got us really thinking about the potential for UGC Avatar items and just look at some of these really fun examples as you can see. We also saw some folks who wanted to push the boundaries and be a little pro Procavitive, pro, 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 okay, pro vocavitive. You know who you are. I have no idea what that word means. A few people really did go too far though, and we saw some customization that just wasn't appropriate. We're pretty sure you all know it, but to be clear, it breaks the creator code of conduct, then we won't allow it. We never want the small subset of rule breakers impacting the player creation experience for the majority of players. So we put some great tools in place that help us detect inappropriate shirts within seconds of publishing. It works by scanning shirts for things that would be a no-go like nudity, hate, or drug content. It took us a while to get these systems fine-tuned, hiding and lowering thresholds for different categories and types of no-go content so that rule breakers had less of a chance of slipping through the cracks. And that system is now doing a pretty good job of making sure all your excellent creations get published ASAP and those a handful of bad ones don't. If your shirt is detected as violating their creator code of conduct, we take down the shirt so that it doesn't get on the store. We operate on the premise of no harm, no foul. So creators get a warning with no ban because we want you to be able to continue creating great stuff and if their creation tools are repeatedly abused though, they may remove your shirt creation privileges. So consider this a fair warning.
Now, when they were doing that fine tuning and decreased the thresholds of, for some of their creator credit conduct categories, it got them thinking. What if AI gets it wrong? How do we match up the automated rules with reality? This can make it harder than it sounds, as much of these rules are about context and taste. Technically, if the AI does get it wrong, the risk of the creator is small because we just take down the shirt, but that wasn't good enough for us. So we built in a new appeal system for shirts that are flagged by our AI systems, and if you think the AI got it wrong and the shirt is not a violation of the creator code of conduct, you can appeal and we will review it and reinstate it if it was a false flag. These appeals will even be used to fine tune their systems to keep making them more accurate, so please, but don't abuse this new function. As you guys can see, there's also some images showing them as well, how you can repeal them and stuff, and how it tells you that the custom avatar item moderation flagged and whatever. It's pretty cool UI. Anyways, what happens when the AI doesn't work the other way and something slips through that shouldn't? Like always, you can report shirts that breach the code of conduct and they'll review it and take action on those too. We've learned a lot of lessons enabling everyone to create shirts that they've dreamed of, and now those lessons are key to the development of their moderation systems for Avatar Studio. As you've seen, we're taking it slow, building out and fine-tuning our automated scanning and appeal systems to match our code of conduct, and planning out extra protections for Avatar items that appear in high-profile areas like our featured clothing, and keep an eye out for future updates that share more detail on how they're integrating trust and safety into fundamentals of Avatar and Creation Studio, and creating tools with the potential for new clothing and accessory styles. Pumpkin head and Sigma headband, anyone? No, anyways, disregarding my terrible reading of that developer blog, be sure to let me know your guys' thoughts on all the actual news that we covered today. Alright, if I make this basketball, you have to like the video right now. Ugh! Okay, pretend that didn't happen, but I do have channel memberships I should shout out. Of course, big massive shout out to my channel memberships. If you guys don't know what that is, it's basically just like a Patreon where I, people give me money every single month and I give them perks like being shouted out in videos and sneak peeks to videos and etc, etc. They're awesome, they're great, I love them a lot, and I even have these cool little images showing off their YouTube account, so please check them out if you really want to. Or join the family so you can appear on the videos and stuff. Uh, they're pretty cool. Anyways, we got Daytrix, Hydro, Kobe Fan76, Not the Puff, the Dragon Boy, Ghastly, Garlic Bread, It's Ready, RR, Nolan, Raphael, Cloud, Netflix Design, and of course, Box David. Thank you, I love you, and of course, back to the video. Pretty interesting stuff, I'm not gonna lie, and it's super cool to see developer blogs talking about their progress thus far. But of course, I will be back with more Rec Room news, and if you want to check out more Rec Room news, I have a bunch of videos on that side of the screen and stuff like that, and that I would greatly appreciate it if you decided to check out and whatever. Like, subscribe, use my code in game if you really want to, and I really do appreciate all of your support. Um, if you want anything new about me and stuff like that, uh, I dyed my hair purple.